Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships, where in today's audio-visual extravaganza here in the neighbor's map, uh, Spartians, one, two, three, you know what, I'm going to level with you. He, he actually confessed in the email that accompanied this replay file, which, by the way, is bugged. Yes, we couldn't see the enemy team list, but I've enabled the team displays on the left and right of the screen to give us some idea of what's going on. Um, he explained that... He created this name many, many years ago when he was young and stupid and didn't know how to spell Spartans. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, at least he's honest. So this is Spartans in the German Tier 7 battleship, although technically it's more of a battle cruiser, the Prinz Heinrich. A very, very good ship. And I have to say the matchmaking in this battle, which is a domination battle here on the uh, neighbor's map, has been pretty kind to him. I mean, for a start, he's top tier and he's in a very, very good ship. Also, there are no aircraft carriers, which means everybody's potentially going to be allowed to have some fun. The only real downsides here are, well, one, there is a submarine in play on each team, but more importantly, if you're in a battleship, there are four destroyers in play on each team. Actually, I'd be more nervous if I was in one of the two cruisers on each team, because they're only tier five and six. And tier 5 and 6 cruisers are made out of citadels and ammunition, and they explode if somebody so much as looks at them. And there are four battleships, oh sorry, five battleships on each team, so... <laughs> I'd be very, very nervous if I was in one of the two cruisers on either of these teams. Uh, but I'm not, and Spartans is in a top tier battleship, a very, very good top tier battleship, the Prince Heinrich. Armed with 15 inch guns. These are basically the same guns that you find on the Bayern. She does only have eight of them, but that's two more than you get on the Gneiss now. And unlike the Gneiss now, these things actually tend to hit what you shoot them at because they get cruiser dispersion. I'm never going to stop ragging on the Gneiss now, okay? <laughs> One, because it's funny, and two, because it's true. It's a terrible ship. Same tier as the Prince Heinrich, and look at the difference between the two of them. Well, actually, the Gneiss now isn't a terrible ship. I've said this before, but it bears repeating. It's actually a very, very good ship. It's just a very, very good ship with absolutely terrible guns. Which is a bit of a problem when most of the gameplay revolves around that. Oh, would you... Just as I was going on about how good the guns on the Prince Heinrich were. Broadside Omaha, open water, eight-shot salvo, one hit, and it's an overpen. <laughs> Fuck off, game. <laughs> I swear it does it on purpose. <laughs> right, anyway. Oh, destroyer spotted, HMS Jervis, in range of the secondaries, I believe. And again, he, well, okay, yeah, fine. He didn't actually hit the Jervis, but look, it's a small target at 10 kilometers, and look at how tight the grouping was. I mean, if that had been a cruiser, it would be dead. Unfortunately, it, it wasn't, so it isn't. So anyway, moving on. The friendly Gator up ahead is running his Hydro, and I don't know if the Jervis is actually inside Hydro range or whether or not he's just going too fast to stay inside his smoke. Actually, I think he must be inside Hydro range, otherwise the Gator wouldn't be able to spot him from within his own smoke screen, and he is well and truly detected and getting well and truly hammered. He's getting torpedoes away, but of course, with the Gator running Hydro, those torpedoes are coming as no surprise to anybody. And there's the first blood award. Scratch one Jervis, one enemy destroyer down, and all of the friendly battleships heaved a sigh of relief. So, <laughs> but this battle is just getting started. It is, of course, domination mode. There are three cap circles up for grabs. Oh, there's the Omaha again. That guy really does like pushing his look. You do know you're in a tier five light cruiser, right? Oh, speaking of light cruisers, the team have just lost their Nuremberg. That's uh, suboptimal. Wow, more overpens. <laughs> I can't believe that Omaha keeps getting away. Oh no, somebody just spanked him. Anyway, let's not worry about the Omaha just now. Right now he's on the other side of an island, therefore he is somebody else's problem. I'm not saying he just activated his somebody else's problem field, because he is still getting spanked. He's just not Spartan's problem right now. The hood up there is... The Hood's not a bad ship either. I mean, they're both tier 7 battle cruisers, kind of. Uh, they both have 15 inch guns. I think the Prince Heinrich's probably the better ship though. Oh, the Omaha finally went down. The Emerald took him out. Nice. The enemy team are now losing two kills to one. 
But yes, I do think the Prince Heinrich, even though I love the hood, I'm, I have to admit the Prince Heinrich is a better ship. They're both armed with 15-inch guns. They both have the same number of 15-inch guns. Oh, hello, enemy destroyer. Secondary's focused. He's never going to hit him with torpedoes here if he continues sailing in a straight line, but he might turn, so... Oh, hang on. Way the hell did... Oh, a bit of a stutter there. Oh, he's got him. <laughs> Second kill. <laughs> Uh, close quarters expert award. I don't know what the hell the Matsuki thought he was doing there, but the enemy team are now losing three kills to one. Uh, the enemy guider stuck in open water. Very, very visible, getting hammered by pretty much everybody. Torpedoes, very predictable, very easy to dodge. Oh, his engine just got knocked out. He may be running the last stand skill, so no, it doesn't matter, he's dead anyway. Right, that just leaves the hood. So we were comparing the two, weren't we? And they are, you know, broadly similar ships. They're both tier 7 battle cruisers. They're both armed with eight very good 15-inch guns. Oh, friendly New York just got a kill. Locked out the enemy Auber, so the enemy team are now losing one, two, three, five kills to one. <sighs> yeah. But, back to Prince Heinrich versus Hood. So, what is there to choose between these two ships, other than a different flag? Um, well, it comes down to the differences between the ships. The Hood's only real selling point that differentiates it is that it has enhanced anti-aircraft defences, but then not enhanced nearly enough to make any kind of difference in common with most anti-aircraft defences in this game. So, just not worth it. Whereas the Prince Heinrich gets really good secondaries and torpedoes. And it also gets Spartan's fourth kill of the game, and the team's sixth. And the enemy team still have only sunk the Nuremberg. Also, Spartan's team have two of the three cap circles, and at the point where he sank the hood, that momentarily brought the enemy team down to 70 points. <laughs> 230 less than they started the game with. So, yeah, things are going monumentally badly for the enemy team but let's not get too carried away because even though spartan's team and spartan in particular have been doing very well they've sunk six enemy ships surely nothing can stop them now but they've lost an awful lot of health in the process in particular the king george v over there and the colorado's looking at him and thinking om nom nom which is great news of course for spartans because it means nobody's going to be shooting at him for the foreseeable future not as long as that King George V has given broadside to the Colorado's 16-inch guns while spamming him with high explosive. King George, you might want to turn around around about now. In fact, he was extremely lucky that he didn't get deleted right there and then. But the King George V survival is giving Spartans an opportunity to get these guns reloaded and spank the broadside of the Colorado too. King George V has, uh, I mean, it's a, I think it's a definite case of too little too late. Oh, there's the Confederate award. There is no way that King George is going to survive the next salvo from that Colorado. And here it comes. And off screen. Yep, there goes the King George. The enemy team have now doubled their kill score. <laughs> Whether or not the Colorado makes it into cover is an entirely different question. Oh, the enemy team have managed to score another kill. What's going on? There goes the New York. There goes the Akatsuki. Oh, there's the fight back. And, come on, come on, oh there's a, there goes the Colorado and there's the Kraken unleashed. Note that due to Spartan's positioning, the Texas over there was unable to do anything to assist the Colorado against him. Also, I suppose credit to the King George V for staying alive for just long enough to ensure that the Colorado was fully occupied as well. Spartan's team are still two kills and 300 points, actually 350 points up though, so this this doesn't really qualify as his team trying to throw. Oh, oh, hang on a second. They've just lost their submarine, the Undyne. Spartan's not actually in a position to do anything himself either, as long as that Texas... Oh, and they've just lost the New York. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Perhaps we've spoken too soon. Spartan now has clear shots at the Texas, though, and the Texas is in a lot of trouble here because he's just too slow to get to safety. So his only options here are continue to steam towards the safety of his allies and get his broadside spanked, turn away and run into the island at the back there, or turn in and potentially eat Prince Heinrich torpedoes. Oh, the team have just lost their Mutsuki. Gunned down by a Congo? How the hell is a Mutsuki getting close enough to a Congo to get spotted and gunned down? It, it, you know what? The enemy team have just equalised on kills. And they're no longer that far behind on points. 
Oh, there's the high caliber award, by the way, 118,000 damage. And yep, Texas has no option now but to turn away. For, oh, he's dead. I mean, I do feel a certain amount of sympathy for the Texas here. There's just no way he's going to be able to get away from here. His, his only real mistake was being the last surviving ship on a collapsing flank and in a ship that was just too slow to be able to fall back. But he's dead. There's another kill, number six, and another close quarters expert award. But then just as quickly as Spartans puts the team ahead on kills once again, the scores are brought back even by the enemy uh, Akatsuki who sinks the friendly New Mexico. We didn't actually see it happening, but uh, the New Mexico flooded to death, so we obviously ate a couple of uh, Japanese torpedoes there. So thanks mostly to the two caps, well thanks entirely to the two caps, which are in no danger of being flipped by the way, with the enemy team all down there in the southwestern end of the map. But the enemy team have managed to achieve kill parity, and I'm not entirely sure what's going on with these destroyers that continue to throw themselves into suicide range against enemy battleships. I mean, the Fubuki, you know what? That's not a bad choice. He's basically laying a smokescreen for the Gator. The Fubuki's problem, <laughs> while we appreciate the teamwork, is that he's failing to take advantage of the smokescreen himself and was spotted, so gunned down by the New Mexico. I mean, I appreciate what the Fubuki was trying to do there. There's no point in both of your destroyers staying inside the smoke screen. It's far better for one of you to lay smoke for the other one and then get out of the smoke screen in order to spot for the one that's inside the smoke screen and everybody else who's on the other side of the smoke screen. But, oh, a Citadel. Beautiful hit on the Congo. Uh, where were we? Yes. So while I appreciate the Fubuki's intentions, it's important to not get spotted <laughs> while you're doing it. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Hey, he tried. His intentions were pure. Speaking of somebody who's been trying real hard, that friendly emerald is still alive. And he's kicking ass. What's going on? <laughs> it's a, t a tier 5 light cruiser that's notoriously shit, even by the standards of tier 5 light cruisers. And he's in a tier 7 battle. And he's kicking ass. Well played to that guy, Darth Revan in the Emerald. Good job. Oh, the gate has been caught, leaving the smoke screen. He's dead. Wow. Um, I do believe Spartan's team are now outnumbered two to one. <laughs> Where did that lead go? Right. Needs to finish this Congo, definitely. Oh, another great hit. Yeah, I mean, the Congo is a tier 5 battleship. Don't get me wrong, I like the Congo. I love its guns, but it doesn't have many of them. They're only 14 inches, and its armour is absolutely terrible. You don't go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a 15-inch gun-armed battleship in that thing. Especially not a 15-inch gun-armed battleship that has torpedoes. But what choice does the Congo have? And that's... Wow. Kill number 7. Um, fires set by the secondaries. And now the New Mexico. Another... Well, actually, no, not Tier 5, Tier 6, but a really bad Tier 6 battleship. The New Mexico just doesn't have anything going for it. Bad armor, bad guns, bad speed. The only thing good about the New Mexico is that it leads to the Colorado. And the only thing good about the Colorado is that it has, well, good guns. And it leads to the North Carolina, which is great. But the North Carolina is a long, long way away from the New Mexico. Geographically speaking as well. Oh dear. Yeah, you're not going to get away with giving broadside to the Prince Heinrich like that. I mean, the Prince Heinrich doesn't have great armor either. It's got pretty bad armor, and it's got a terrible health pool. But he's angled, and the New Mexico isn't. And the New Mexico only has 14-inch guns and can't overmatch him. And he's dead too. Kill number eight, and another close quarters expert award. Now, where did that submarine go? He did just ping us. Oh, here comes his... Well, that, that's going to hit, but it's only one. Meanwhile, the Emerald... That absolute rock star in probably the worst ship in this battle is uh, keeping that Akatsuki fully occupied. More torpedoes. Come on, where are you? Ping us again so we get to see where you are. Because that's the downside of these guided torpedo things. You have to get a sonar ping. And if you pop a sonar ping, there we go. That's what happens. We see where you are. Thank you very much. That's exactly what we were waiting for. There go the depth charge attack planes. It's kind of ironic, isn't it, that battleships are actually the most effective counter to submarines in this game because they can launch 
depth charges at range, whereas destroyers and most of the cruisers actually have to sail directly over the top of the submarine and engage them with ship-borne depth charges. Oh, World of Warships, you so silly. <laughs> the things that were designed to escort battleships and shield them from things like submarine attack are actually the worst things in the game at attacking submarines. Yeah. World of Warships logic. Go on, Emerald. But, well, I mean, you know, the assistance was appreciated. But that's kill number nine. <laughs> kill number nine. I mean, yes, he's top tier. Yes, there were no aircraft carriers. But still, nine kills for Spartans in the Prince Heinrich. And that just leaves the Akatsuki, who I am pretty sure, judging by the spread of those torpedoes, is lurking in the gap between those two islands over there. Oh, that's a rather... Oh, well, they didn't have that. There was a rather conveniently Prince Heinrich-shaped gap in that torpedo spread, but it didn't matter. They ran out of steam anyway. Let's have a quick look at the points. More than four minutes to go. They're probably going to win on points in about 30 seconds. Honestly, the safest thing to do here... I mean, they've spotted him, so why the hell not? But the safest thing to do here would be to just turn around and run, because he's never going to catch them. And he's certainly not going to torpedo you if you're running away from him. There goes the Emerald's Hydro. Very well done. Akatsuki torpedo spotted. Easily going to be able to avoid those. I mean, a tenth kill would be nice. I can't remember the last time I saw a game where somebody scored ten kills. It's going to be down to the Emerald to flush him out from that smoke, though. If the Akatsuki has any sense, he's not going to be staying inside the smoke, because if you're smoked up, they can't see in, but you can't see out either. So you don't want to be hanging around... Yeah, and that's exactly what he's doing. 991 points. Shots out. Can we get 10 kills? There go the secondaries. Nope. 1,000 points. 10th kill denied. Oh, Spartans, you horrible little scrub -dub. What kind of noob only gets 9 kills <laughs> in the Prince Heinrich? Look at that, 334 secondaries. Only the one Citadel, 10 fires, 77 main battery gun hits. Yeah, stick that up your pipe and smoke it, good eyes now. And special mention, of course, to Darth Revan in the Emerald. Um, I mean, wow. <laughs> just, just by virtue of the fact that he was in the Emerald in the Tier 7 battle and wasn't the first one killed. So well done to him too. And that's it for today. I hope you've all enjoyed it. And as always, take care. And I'll catch you next time.